Hey everyone, and uh, welcome back to the session. Uh, let me just share my screen before we go ahead. <clears throat> all right, so before we continue ahead, um, just to ask, I hope you're all uh, uh, able to hear me and see the screen as well. Can anyone just confirm? Yep, I see the screen. Right, perfect. Thanks, Nick. Right, and um, yeah, welcome back, OST. Right, so we can go ahead in that case. All right. So let me just create a new file for the next part of this logic that we're going to start with. So we're going to start with um, the basic operators and constructs. We're going to try to work around and uh, uh, learn these to begin with. And just so that we all know, um, just so that we are all aware of this <clears throat> single point, uh, is that currently whatever we are working on, as of now, whatever we are learning and working on, uh, are purely the basics of Python. These are the fundamentals and foundations when it comes down to Python, right? So many of you might be well aware of this. Some of you might be new to this. That's totally all right. But possibly by end of today, we will be done with the very basic concepts and the very basic logic when it comes down to Python. So when we start with the next sessions, that is uh, particularly in the next session tomorrow, there are a lot of things that we're going to do um, that might be new to a lot of you or might be a refresher plus a lot of new things as well. So let's just keep that in mind, right? So yeah, before we go further ahead, let's uh, begin on this. Right, um, before we move ahead to the next thing, one of the first thing I wanna point out about Python to any developer, whether it's an experienced developer or an aspiring developer is the concept of linting when it comes down to the code. So we know we use a length for our jackets and so on, right? It's pretty much the same when it comes down to code as well. Uh, you lint the code to beautify it. You lint the code to make sure that wherever you feel that um, there might be something that can be written better within a code, you can work around it. You can do that. So that's one thing that we need to look at when it comes down to this. Um, so I'm just gonna walk you through one particular extension called PyLint. Yeah, there we go. Uh, PyLint is an extension that's available again by Microsoft. It's uh, for linting Python files. It's available um, directly as an extension within uh, VS Code that you can try out if you're able to. Um, I've already installed this. I've just disabled it for now. And uh, I'm just going to temporarily enable it. So you can take a look at it and uh, try to understand what it is, what it does, and where it helps. So for example, uh, you can see all these blue squiggly lines under it. It just keeps saying what are the possible things that you can work around to improve your code from a stylistic point of view uh, to help people understand it better. For example, the first line starts with from. So it says you're missing a module called doc string. You don't have a doc string at all. So if you just click on this link and you go to PyLint's documentation, <clears throat> sorry for that, uh, it opens up uh, this particular page where it'll show you what are the things that might cause this issue and how you might resolve it. Now, these are not errors, just so we all know. Um, these are in no way errors whatsoever. These are just additional ways you can make your code look better for other developers. I'll give you an example for it. Most of us have a monitor that can uh, work through somewhere around 50, 60 characters. Uh, there are a lot of organizations that I have been a part of where there is strict rule. There are strict rules to make sure that whatever you type in terms of code, does not cross 100 characters or does not cross 150 characters. If I write a comment, let's say I'm just going to take this. 
and just copy paste it a few times. And I'm just going to save it. You can see there's a squiggly line here already. The squiggly line is because the line is too long. It says 149 characters is what you have typed. 100 is what should be the limit. So if you again open this pilot document and just take a look at it, um, it says the reason is because you have used a line that is longer than a given number of characters. Like it gives us an example. This is a problematic code, whereas this is fine. The reason for this is pretty simple. Whenever developers walk through the code, um, <clears throat> think about this. You might be working on your code by yourself, or you might be working on a code with a team. One of your team members might use a vertical monitor because it helps scrolling down and you don't have to worry about reading lengthy lines of code. Or there are some developers who use a regular monitor, but they don't want to scroll till the end and lose track of what they're reading. So to avoid all these very minor things that we see, PyLint by default says the number of characters you have used in this line of comment or code is way too much. You need to reduce it. And only when you reduce it, you can make sure that people can see your entire code at one step and able to understand it and walk through the rest of the code as it is. Um, this is just one example that I'm providing to you of why linting is important. But in reality, linting is quite important to make sure that your code is written well, is readable, is understandable, not only to you, but to other developers as well. So this is just one thing I just wanted to introduce you to. Uh, again, I'm going to disable it for now because um, we're really not going to focus on linting at this point of time. Our main purpose is to just learn and work around this and understand this. But um, if you want to go through in detail, if you want to take a look at it, if you want to uh, work around it in such a way that you start to walk through this step by step and make sure that any steps that you're taking, any operations you're performing are done in a way where uh, people can understand it better, people can read and learn it better. Um, you can take a look at PyLint as a possible, um, let's say, library that you can use. Um, again, this is quite common in various large scale organizations that I've been a part of as well, where uh, these organizations particularly request all their employees to follow this so that every new developer can just take a look at it and understand. I'll, I'll give you one other example of um, PyLint's uh, purpose as well. That is, if you take a look at this first line, and again, just to give you a brief, I know this is not a basic part of Python. There's absolutely no requirement for us to learn this when we learn Python, but my only purpose is to make sure that you are um, able to know the best practices and best tips and techniques around in uh, uh, the world of development. And it's not just getting to know programming language, which is the easier task, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, that's why I wanted to introduce you to a few things here and there, which we'll continue to do constantly. So one other thing I just want to uh, point out here is this missing module doc string. So this basically means that when you use a module without any doc string, so empty modules do not require doc string. Uh, essentially, the idea is you're going to have to specify what is this Python file is about or what exactly this whole code is about. The first line of the code, according to PyLint, in any file or we call as module, is supposed to be what is this module about, something like. Let's see. This um, module walks through the basic string operations. And let's just save this. And there we go. We've got this. However, take a look at this. It still doesn't confirm to snake case. Another thing, whenever you talk, whenever you take a look at this, is that there's something called a snake case and so on. There's a lot of specific requirements, a lot of specific um, conditions that it walks you through. And uh, um, the moment you start 
working through this um on day one it's something you feel like hey this is way too much restrictions these are um way too much complicated stuff that's what we feel like uh, however um when we start looking into this and when we start following this as a practice um it becomes quite useful for you as a developer uh, to show off your skills to write effective and readable as well as understandable code for others and that's a major part of this that's one thing that we need to know and the reason why this is particularly an issue here is because it's saying the file name does not conform to snake case naming so it does not expect you to name file with numbers it's like uh, let's say file underscore strings now you don't get that error so this is just one thing i wanted to show you but i'm not going to use linting for now for what we are doing but it's a really effective way for you to have readable and understandable code for a lot of organizations and um, yeah just before i move ahead i have seen a lot of organizations particularly um, make sure that whatever developer they hire or whoever is the developer that this organization would hire uh, knows about the standard practices when it comes down to this yeah anyway uh, moving ahead um yeah i am not sure if somebody were unmuted but if there are any queries uh, please go ahead we'll take up the query and then move ahead if if there are any all right so no queries further ahead so let's go ahead and continue from where we left off all right so let's start with this uh, again just to give you a heads up you can use pylint for this purpose but uh, i'm going to disable it for now because we are only looking at what we are reading what we are working on uh, which is just the basics but whenever you start working on professional projects it's um, quite a good thing to make sure your code is readable and understandable for others as well as you when you might look at your own code like let's say weeks or months down the line uh, let's move on to operators again i'm not going to go through all the operators within python because we might most probably will not use all the operators we're only going to use the most important operators that we're going to work on so let's start with some uh, inbuilt functions and then go for operators now <clears throat> there are a lot of inbuilt functions like uh, 